This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This is the second lecture on irrecoverable doubtful debts. And in the previous lecture, I explained the terminology and showed you um, how we go about deciding what will appear on Statement of Financial Position, Statement of Profit or Loss. In this lecture, I'll start to go through the uh, actual accounting entries which, as always, the entries themselves are somewhat less important, but you can be asked, so let's check. Uh, and I'll explain by going through example two. So if you turn to it and have a quick look with me. Silla started business on 1st of January 2000, and as at 31st December 2000, the balance in her receivables account was 82,000. So the bookkeeper has been... Um, Dealing with all the sales on credit, debit receivables, credit sales. They've been dealing with all the cash received from customers, uh, debit cash, credit receivables. And at the end of the year, when the accountant arrives, we have a balance on the receivables account. A receivables account. And there's a balance of 82,000. And of course, receivables are an asset, it's a debit balance. And so that's how it appears when the accountant arrives. Uh, receivables are going to appear on the statement of financial position, but uh, the accountant has to look through who owes that 82,000 and check to see are any of them a problem. And it says on investigation, it was found to include the following debts. John owed 5,000, irrecoverable. George owes 8,000, is doubtful. Paul owes 3,000, irrecoverable. Anne owes 2,000, doubtful. Well, the first thing always, remember any irrecoverable debts, we're never going to get the money, we remove completely. And so let's look at irrecoverables. John is irrecoverable. He owes 5,000. It's included in that 82. We need to remove it. To remove it, credit receivables 5,000. And the debt has disappeared. The cost of removing it, we debit irrecoverable and doubtful debts expense account. Credit receivables, debit, irrecoverable and doubtful debts. And in fact, it's such a long thing to say, irrecoverable and doubtful debts account. We tend to just call it uh, irrecoverable debts account. But it's full name. We're showing the full expense of the irrecoverables and later the doubtfuls. Anyway. I say, first thing, remove any irrecoverable so anymore. Yes, there is. Um, forget George for the minute, he's doubtful, but Paul is irrecoverable. So again, remove it completely. Credit receivables, debit, irrecoverable debts expense. Well, those are all the irrecoverables. And so having removed them, uh, we're left with a balance on receivables of how much? Uh, 74,000. Uh, that's the amount that we're hoping to collect. But our next job is to look to see if have we any doubtful debts do we need an allowance for receivables? And here, first of all, we need to do some workings. We always need a little bit of workings for this. And to calculate the allowance that's needed, we look for two things. First of all, do we need any specific allowance? 
And remember, specific allowances are for individual debts that we know are a problem. So look down the list again. Yes, there are. B, George. George is doubtful. 8,000. We leave him as still owing. He's still in the 74,000. We're hoping to get the money, but we're going to have this allowance. Any others? Yes, D, Anne. Anne owes 2,000. She's doubtful. So in total, there's a specific allowance needed of 10,000. But if you remember from the previous lecture, we just show one figure for total allowance, which is the specific plus any general allowance. Now, there won't always be a general allowance. If there's no mention, then there isn't. But here there is, the last line says, in addition, it's been decided to have a general allowance of 4% of the remaining debts. Now be careful here, it's not hard arithmetic, uh, but too many people make a silly mistake. The general allowance is always whatever percent you're told, here 4%, of those receivables that we think are okay. Now what I mean is the total receivables of the receivables account having removed the recoverables is 74,000. However, we already know that 10,000 of those we know there's a problem, a specific uh, allowance, and so the other 64,000 we think are okay, but to be safe, we're going to have this general allowance. And 4% of 64,000 cannot be 25,600. Let me do it again. 64,000 times 4% is 2,560. And so although there are two separate reasons for these figures, the total allowance needed is 12,560. And remember what's going to happen. On our statement of financial position, we're going to subtract from the receivables 12,560. Well, we open up a new account called Allowance for Receivables. I'll remind you of the layout uh, immediately we've done the entries, but if you do remember from the last uh, lecture, on the statement of financial position, we're going to show receivables less this allowance. Receivables are a debit balance, and so to be able to reduce the figure on the statement, we need to credit the allowance account by 12,560. The double entry, the cost of creating an allowance, again, irrecoverable and doubtful debts account. Credit the allowance, that's, yes, debit, irrecoverable and doubtful debts expense. And there we are, all that remains is to close off the accounts and then summarise how they appear. Receivable, 74,000. That will appear in the statement of financial position. We leave the balance there. Uh, the allowance for receivables. That will appear on the statement of financial position. We'll subtract it from the receivables. We leave the balance there. Uh, but finally, irrecoverable and doubtful debts expense. This is the total cost of everything we've done. And so the total of 20,560, well, like all expense accounts, we move it to the statement of financial position. Credit irrecoverable and doubtful debts. 
debit statement of profit or loss. And there's the total expense that will appear, 2560. So there are the entries. Uh, now let's just summarise how they'll appear on the statements. On the statement of financial position, under the heading current assets, we've got receivables, the debit balance, 74,000. As always, that's what we're hoping to collect. But we subtract the credit balance on the allowance for receivables which was 12,560 and so the final figure on receivables 74,000 minus 12,560 is 61,440 and that is the final figure appearing on the statement. But we must, we must show that breakdown. And of course, on the statement of profit or loss, under the heading expenses, with irrecoverable and doubtful debts. What was the total? 2560. And there we are. So I hope no problem there with the debits and credits. Although, again, it's the final presentation that's the most important. However, we are going to need one more lecture, quite importantly, to show you what happens next year. Uh, that was uh, Scylla's first year of business, and appreciate at the end of the year, we have a balance on receivables 74. We left it there, it's still there at the beginning of next year. Uh, we have a balance on allowance for receivables of 12,560. We leave it there, it's still there at the beginning of next year. Irrecoverable and doubtful debts expense account. It was moved to the uh, statement of profit or loss. The, there's no balance left. There's no balance at the beginning of next year. But I do need to show you what happens next year, which is the final example in the notes. I'll go through that uh, in the next, in the final lecture on this chapter.